Okay, so that was The Great Race. Pretty much a jumbled mess, but hey, it was entertaining at some parts. Anyway, next week we'll be taking a look at yet another Christmas release, Tinsel on the Tracks. I'll see you all then. Good night, everybody. Did you really think the HMR was over? Did you think YouTube glitched or something? Did you think that I glitched? <laughs> no, I'm just full of surprises. Anyway, welcome back to Thomas and Friends Home Media Reviews. Today's review was on The Great Race. Kind of spoiled my end review of the film, but hey, you don't know my in-depth thoughts on it, so stick around for that. Let's go ahead and jump into the history section of The Great Race. So The Great Race has a pretty interesting release outside of the US. I am going to be covering some UK releases of this as well, not not in the close-up or anything, just date-wise. And the reason I bring that up is because The Great Race aired in theaters in the UK in May of 2016. The US didn't get The Great Race on DVD and Blu-ray until September of 2016. Let's see here. came out the end of May, so that can't count as a month. So June, July, August, September. That's about a four-month gap in between the theatrical release in the UK and the physical media release over here in the US. That's absurd. I get that Thomas movies being shown in theaters over in the UK is a huge deal, and I'm jealous of anybody who got to see this in a theater in the UK. But come on, guys. Mattel, really? You're just stoking the flames for a Twitter argument, okay? I can remember back in 2016, people were getting pissed at fans who lived in the UK because they kept posting screenshots from the movie. They kept posting what could count as spoilers, even though they were just saying that they liked the movie or something like that. I never saw any, like, full spoilers on my Twitter, but I guess I'm just good at, at avoiding them. But US fans were pissed at British fans. British fans were pissed at US fans because US fans wouldn't stop complaining. It just turned into a complete shit show. Mattel, do you understand how entitled this fan base is? Do you understand how angry people can get in this fan base if somebody has something before they do? Here's another thing for me to rant about. Last week, we talked about Start Your Engines, okay? That was released in March on physical media in the US. It's now September and we're just getting something new? That's all. That's, even, that's an even bigger gap in between the theatrical release and the DVD release. See, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. That's a six-month gap with nothing. It was just build-up to this movie. It was just over-hyping, marketing bullshit. We got nothing new except a few reprints of some stuff. That's how you're going to treat us home video collectors. That's how you're going to treat your market. You're just going to leave the market stagnant for six months and then release three new things in the span of like two months and then just stop until March of 2017. The way that these are released just really pisses me off because it makes no logical sense. Anyway, enough of that. Let's go ahead and jump right into the close-up section of The Great Race. <laughs> Alrighty, everybody, here's your close-up look at The Great Race. Now, it's weird. We're starting off with the Blu-ray here. That's because I do not own the DVD-only version of The Great Race. I only picked up the Blu-ray back when this movie first came out, and I really don't see a need for owning the DVD-only version nowadays because, you know, you get a DVD included here, and really the only reason that I would own that is for the case and for the digital HD copy which I don't need that either so I just have the Blu-ray so we're only going to be looking at the Blu-ray uh, case today so we could, since we don't have the DVD but rest assured there will be a D DVD menu tour so anyway we start off here at the top Blu-ray plus the DVD plus D digital HD very similar to Legend of the Lost Treasure and Tale of the Brave You've got a really, really, really nice poster. I love this poster. You've got Thomas and Ashima up here on the front, front and center. The Great Race, the movie up there at the top. All new movie, along with Flying Scotsman and Shooting Star Gordon on the respective sides. Again, this poster is awesome. I really dig this poster art. Much better than the movie, actually. Um, 
Hit Entertainment logo on the side, Thomas and Friends logo, The Great Race. Again, Portrait of Thomas taken from the front. Blu-ray plus DVD kind of shoved in down there at the bottom along with the Universal logo. On the back, HD picture and theater quality sound, Thomas and Friends logo. The race is on for Thomas and Friends. Blurb about what's on the disc. UPC code peeking out through the slipcover. Meet 13 new friends including Ashima. And this really awesome photo of all of the international engines including Thomas, Gordon, and Flying Scotsman there on the back. Really love this image. Even though you don't really meet 13 new friends, it's really you just meet Ashima, Vinny, and like one other person. Sort of. Frida. Yeah, you meet Frida. You have a little indentation down here about ultraviolet and digital HD. It also works with iTunes if you, you know, go that route. Your bonus features include three sing-along songs. Or no, four sing-along songs. I can't read, I guess. 20 character shorts and eight guess who puzzles. Link to the Thomas and Friends website down there at the bottom along with copyright information. Take off the slipcover here. Pretty much exactly the same underneath, except your image is now shifted down with to make room for the Blu-ray disc up here at the top. It, it also says feature length movie up here at the top as opposed to all new movie. But other than that, pretty much the same. Except this image is now shifted up. The blurb is now shifted around the UPC code here. You also don't have the races on. You don't have as much room on the Blu-ray uh, case. Same bonus features listed, same copyright information and such, except you have text specs down here on the bottom. Open this up. There's your disc. It's pretty much the, the exact same art as the DVD, which is over here, except for the giant Blu-ray disc logo at, at the bottom. And there's your DVD for comparison's sake. Both of them are squished up versions of the bottom poster bottom half of the poster. Put that down there. Here's what your digital HD copy code looks like. I've already used my code, so don't try to steal it. And on the back, hey, look at that, Jurassic World. That's a funny advertisement to get on a Thomas & Friends product. Put that down there. Here's your product guide for the Great Race. You've got Trackmaster. Mm, some more Trackmaster. Or no, that's Wooden Railway. I, I was weirded out by the fact that they had Wooden Railway on like a Trackmaster ad, but no, that's actually the Wooden Railway set. That's the Sky High Bridge Jump set. And an advertisement for Extraordinary Engines. Coming to DVD and D D Digital HD Spring of 2017. You've also got a listing for some other DVDs down here at the bottom that you can purchase. Here's some books, but who reads books anymore? Some Thomas clothes and writing things. Um, advertisements for Little Big Club. Experience the Islander Soda like never before. Thomas Land. Thomas Friends on social media. And Thomas and Friends apps with express delivery. I assume that's a game. Take a look on the back here. Here's an advertisement for a new Bob the Builder toy. This is RC Super Scoop. I really don't like the new Bob the Builder stuff. I haven't... I, Actually, I've never actually watched a full episode of the new Bob the Builder stuff, but I hate this new babyish style, so I'm probably just going to hate the series for the rest of my life. Uh, the uh, classics were always the best. So, that is your close-up for The Great Race. Let's go ahead and transition into the menu tour for The Great Race. Ready, everybody. Here's your menu tour for the DVD version of The Great Race. There's your proof that the DVD is in the player. The Blu-ray is right there. So, the DVD menu... Looks like this. It is not similar to the poster art in any way, shape, or form. You have Thomas and Ashima outside of Vickerstown. It's actually quite a nice image. Scenes. What kind of scenes do we have? One, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. Boom, boom. And then some kind of dance battle starts. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. Language selection. Spoken languages, English, English 2.0, same English, um, or same, not, not English, same languages as any other special. Uh, my brain is currently melting out of my ear. Bonus features, what are the bonus features? We have the four songs from the special here. Um, will you, won't you, streamline full surprises, and you can only be you. 
20 character shorts and the guess who puzzles. Now the 20 character shorts, that's interesting. The 20 character shorts are the character spotlights that were re released onto YouTube back in early 2016, late 2015 to hype up the great race. If you don't know what I'm talking about, here's an example. I'll go ahead and play this and we'll watch one of them. Welcome, you fans of speed. Welcome, fans of speed. Welcome, one and all, to this year's Great Railway Show. Only here can you witness the mightiest locomotives from all over the world, competing in feats of strength, speed, and skill. Allow me to introduce you to this year's contenders. And here is Axel of Belgium. And just look at those. So basically what these are is it's a little short. They're about a minute and a half long each. And it highlights one of the international engines here um, in this little segment. You can see he's got like stats over here. He's like a video game character. Speed, weight, length, feel, capacity, strength, and agility. And yeah. It's basically highlighting a, a international engine for their attributes in the Great Railway Show. God damn, this is a, look at that, 25 minutes long for all of these character shorts. Now, I did mention in the past that yeah, we got some exclusivity with the Blu-ray of the Great Race. That's not really true. I thought that the 20 character shorts were only on the Blu-ray and not on the DVD. I was wrong. Unfortunately, there is no exclusivity to the Blu-ray like I thought there was. However, there is some exclusivity to this release. I'm holding up the pamphlet here because I can't grab anything else. There is some exclusivity to this. There are three character shorts on this release that have not been put out on the Thomas & Friends YouTube channel. At least not back in 2016 when these are being uploaded. If they have been, it's been very recent. The three characters that have spotlights on here but are not currently released on the Thomas & Friends YouTube channel, probably, I'm not going to fact check this, someone else can do that, um, are Thomas, Etienne, and Frida. Kind of weird that they didn't put out the Thomas character short on the channel since Thomas is the title character, but I guess they ran out of time because The Great Race was, you know, marketed quite a bit back then. So that's the menu tour for the... DVD version, I'll go, I will uh, go ahead and transition into the Blu-ray menu. Alright, so here we are for the Blu-ray menu. There's your proof. The DVD is behind the pamphlet there. So, so already starting off here, the Blu-ray menu is better, in my opinion, because of the fact that, hey, we get scenes from the movie playing in the background. It's not just a standard image. That's what I like a lot about special menus, which was weird that The Great Race didn't have... Uh, moving images for the DVD version. I can't remember if Legend of the Lost Treasure did or not. I think it did for the DVD version. I know it did for the Blu-ray version, but hey, we don't have the standard universal Blu-ray menu. It's actually changed. If you recall, the standard universal Blu-ray menu had your options over here, but now it's changed to where it's a blue bar down at the bottom. It almost looks kind of like the news in a way, you know, when you you know, like when you're watching the news or something and you see things like scrolling across the screen like, oh, Trump said this or something like that. Yeah, that's what that looks like to me. So play scenes. I assume they are the exact same scenes as on the DVD. Yep, pretty much. Language selection. Same language options as before, except now we have subtitles for the Blu-ray version, which is just English for the hearing impaired. The bonus features, again, are exactly the same as on the DVD kind of kicking myself for saying that, oh yeah, we got exclusivity with this Blu-ray. No, the only thing exclusive with this Blu-ray is the fact that it's in full HD, which is a great feature because I love Thomas in HD. Thomas looks absolutely gorgeous in HD, and I'm sad that this is our last Blu-ray that we'll be covering on this show. Unless, of course, I, you know, go back and pick up Misty Island Rescue and King of the Railway and stuff like that on Blu-ray, which I'm actually planning on doing, so those will actually be the last. But in the main timeline, this is the final Thomas Blu-ray that has been released because Mattel are stupid and they like living in the past. Anyway, that's it for the menu tour. Let's go ahead and transition back and answer the five main questions as always. Okay, so we're back from the close-up and now it's time to answer the five main questions as always. Number one, where can you pick this product up? I have seen a few just 
DVD-only copies of The Great Race in my Walmart a few times. That was back in 2017. And if I'm going to be for real, I'm not a good judge at what's being reprinted and what hasn't been because I guess I just live in a complete dead zone when it comes to Thomas stuff. Because apparently there's reprints of Curious Cargo that I didn't know existed until I saw like a week ago at Meyer. Yeah, that's a thing. It had a Universal logo on it and an updated copyright date. So, huh, they brought back Curious Cargo. That makes total sense, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm just going to say that you can find this online because that's really your best option. Number two, is this product still being printed nowadays? I'm going to say no to this. Number three, should you pick this product up? Again, I kind of spoiled this in the opening bit with my full of surprises joke, but the Great Race is a mess. Okay, I remember in my review I said something akin to, yeah, the Great Race is fun, I enjoyed it, it's not as good as Legend of the Lost Treasure. Wow, Rewatching it this time? The Great Race is not very good. I mean, wow, that's what you came up with? This plot is what you came up with. This, this disjointed plot that would make a Transformers movie laugh at you is what you came up with. You can't see me right now, but I'm just, I'm face palming because how, how did, how did they, how did Mattel think that this was good? You know, part of me feels like I'm being a little mean in this HMR, but you know what? I don't care at this point because the great race, not great. Matter of fact, it's, uh, it's not very good. It's kind of mediocre. The mediocre race is what this really should be called. So let's start off with things that I liked. I like the comedy. I laugh at most of the jokes. Not as much as I did when I first saw it. I thought the movie was hilarious whenever I first saw it. But eh, over time, some of the jokes kind of wane. However, the ending stinger with uh, Diesel being shipped out on the boat screaming I'm full of surprises, that gets me every time. That's That will always be funny. And as I've said previously, I am cool with comedy in Thomas and Friends. If you watch my Wooden Railway series, that's all my series is, is comedy. Okay, with some serious moments and some like railway series and TV series influences thrown in there. But it's mostly comedy. I'm cool with Thomas and Friends having comedy just when it's at the right moments. And for the most part, The Great Race has its comedy at the right moments, for the most part. I love The Flying Scotsman. I think The Flying Scotsman was a great addition to this movie, and he sounds exactly like I thought he would. I think I mentioned this in my review back in 2016 as well. But Flying Scotsman, absolutely perfect. I wish he had more screen time. The Great Race itself, when that actually happens, that's a lot of fun. I enjoy watching that. That's that's awesome. That like whole two minutes of footage that makes up for the entire title, which doesn't make any sense. Why? Why is this called The Great Race? Why? The race... It's like two minutes of the movie. And even at that, it doesn't really impact the main storyline. If anything, The Great Race itself is a subplot. This movie should be called Ashima and Thomas on Sodor. And then, oh look, Great Railway Show for 15 minutes, movie's over. That's what this should be called. That's That'd be a more accurate title. Or better yet, I proposed this in my 2016 review. This should have been called Thomas and the Great Railway Show. Or just The Great Railway Show. Because that's what this movie is. It's building up to The Great Railway Show. Even with that fact, The Great Railway Show lasts for, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes of the movie. It doesn't even seem all that important. It feels like we're there, we spend some time, and then we're back on Sodor and the credits are rolling. What? That's what That's what we were building up to? Like, could we not get a little more of The Great Railway Show? Like, five more minutes, please? Like, not 45 minutes into the movie, you introduce the main plot of your movie, Getting to the Great Railway Show. It makes no sense. I remember I was a big advocate back in the day of the great race is not as bad as people say it is. And to an extent, I still believe that. I find the movie entertaining in some parts. However, it's messy plot and just how its story does not connect with each other at all. The Diesel storyline makes no sense. Why is it in this movie? For a musical number, granted the song is great and I love the mischievous Diesel character, but it doesn't need to be in this movie. It should have been cut. You could have streamlined this movie by at least 15 minutes or so by cutting out that subplot because it only serves as a reason for Thomas to crash and then to have to race to the Great Railway Show to save Gordon, which he doesn't even achieve in doing. You could have cut that storyline out completely. Yeah, you would have lost a great song, but would you rather save a great song or save your entire movie's plot? 
I would personally go with saving the entire movie's plot because then you wouldn't have some 19-year-old ass on the internet complaining about it. I don't mind Ashima. She really doesn't do anything. She's not really that interesting, but she's fine. She works in her role. And yeah, it's a plot we've seen recycled from the past. Thomas wants to go somewhere. He wants to prove himself. He fails. He gets the opportunity and he just... He wins in the end. That's how it always works, right? But at this point, it's so tired and just... I I didn't realize how many times that plot has been used in the series. Because I've watched pretty much all of the series for home media r reviews. There's some season 10 and 11 content I haven't seen. I don't plan on seeking that out. It baffles me. I think the reason why I hated people saying that, oh, it's just reusing a plot from the past back in 2016 was because I hadn't seen those episodes that they were referring to. I, re I think the unlucky tug used the Thomas Epp uh, so dream on as a reference to this movie's plot. I personally have not seen dream on, but I'm going to take his word for it and say, yeah, probably it's probably a repeat. Anyway, before I rant some more, let's talk about the special features on this Blu-ray slash DVD. Uh, the picture quality is amazing. I have no complaints there. Thomas always looks amazing in 1080p. I don't care what movie it is. It could be Misty Island Rescue. It, it could still look amazing. The movie itself could be total garbage, but it would still look pretty cool. And the 20 character shorts that are included on both of the Blu-ray and the DVD. That's cool, okay? I don't think the marketing for The Great Race was handled particularly well, especially with the fact that it was building up to The Great Race for a year, and we got what was mostly underwhelming. For sure, it did not live up to the hype that Mattel was pushing. However, those character shorts were pretty awesome. They served as fleshing out the international characters and promising that they would all have a bigger role in the special, even though they're all just background characters, which I'm fine with, okay? That's one thing I can't see why people complain about that. The international characters are extras. They're extras in a movie. Who cares if they have any character or not? I don't care about Carlos or Young Bao or any of those characters. Just let them be extras. Let them be background fodder. Nobody cares about, I don't know, the citizens in New York running away from the aliens in the first Avengers film. You didn't see anybody complaining there that, oh, well, the guy in the black suit, yeah, I was really, I wasn't riveted by his character. Not recommend. I really wanted to see more of him. No, he's an extra, exactly like these characters are. They're extras. I will admit, though, yes, if you did watch those character shorts, they were built up to be way more than they actually were in the movie. And I can understand that if you watch those character shorts leading up to the movie, you would be underwhelmed. I didn't watch those character shorts because I didn't care about any of them. However, it is nice that they're included here. And you get three little exclusive ones. I think it's Thomas, Etienne, and Frida, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, upon doing... 15 seconds of research, and by research I mean going on Hero the Japanese Train's channel and looking at the video he posted when the Great Race Blu-ray came out. Yes, I was correct. It's Thomas, Etienne, and Frida. Those three character shorts were not released online to my knowledge. I'm not sure if they were released maybe after the Blu-ray came out, which would neglect the purchase of that, because like, why would you need that for the exclusive content? It's no longer exclusive if you put it out on the internet for people to see. I also would like to talk about the, the DVD-only version of The Great Race. While I do not own it, and I probably never will because I don't need it, it is a landmark in Thomas and Friends home media history. This is the first time a digital copy of any Thomas film has been included with the DVD only version. So far, the only digital copies that you could get for the films were available with the Blu rays. However, now with the DVD only of The Great Race, you can get a digital code for it, which honestly adds a bit of value to that DVD only copy, as does having one with a slipcover. Again, I probably will never own that version because I don't need it. I have a DVD copy is just sitting inside of my glorious Blu-ray case. I also would like to mention the soundtrack. The soundtrack of this movie is awesome. All of the songs are great. And honestly, this movie does teach a good message about, hey, you just be yourself. You're perfect the way that you are. I know that when I was uh, a bit of a youngster, maybe when I was about five or six, I was really self-conscious. I was like, hey, I'm not sure if I fit in or not. 
You know, should I change? Should I try and change myself? Break me? Shake me? Take me all apart? I didn't say that, but I believe me, I thought it. But if I had the great race back then, I would have said, screw that, man. I'm going to be myself. And that's what I learned when I grew up. Because you can't listen to what everybody says about you. Who cares what other people think about you? You be you. Especially if that means you are a Republican on your Twitter and you constantly tweet about politics and people get angry at you about that because oh, it's a Thomas Twitter. It's, you're only supposed to tweet about Thomas things. No, it's my Twitter. Shut up. I'll tweet about what I want. If you don't follow me on Twitter, you obviously don't know what I was referencing there. Anyway, good message. So final verdict on The Great Race. I think the movie is acceptable. However, its plot is messy. Its characters are eh, especially with Ashima. She really doesn't do anything important. However, the comedy I enjoy, Flying Scotsman I enjoy, The Great Race portion I enjoy. I enjoy Gordon a lot more in this special than any other character, actually. Gordon and the Flying Scotsman are my favorite characters coming out of this special. And I agree with what the unlucky Tug said in his thoughts on of The Great Race. I think that this movie should have been about Gordon. Should have been about his struggle trying to fight his brother and win the great race. Unfortunately, we can't have a special that doesn't feature Thomas as the main character because, ah, oh, that won't market to children. As I said, the great race is, is a jumbled mess in terms of story, but I didn't hate it while I was watching it. I, I felt kind of indifferent towards it, which is why I'm going to give it a recommend. But it's not, you know, it's not a glowing recommend. It's, it's what's akin to a weak recommend, actually. It's kind of like, yeah, you should see it, but it shouldn't be at the top of your Netflix queue if they had Thomas on Netflix anymore, which they don't. And I'm sad to say that because I really liked The Great Race when it first came out. I really did. And it wasn't just to be like a hipster to say like, oh yeah, I like this movie that everybody else hates. I really did enjoy it when it... I hit the mic stand. I really did enjoy it when it first came out, but rewatching it now, it does not hold up. Number four, where should you pick this product up? Same answers as number one. And number five, what price should you pay? For the Blu-ray version, 15 especially with slipcover, and if it includes that little slip for the code, because that that's a little extra value there, especially if you do like the Vudu or iTunes digital download stuff. I personally use Vudu. It's one of the best services out there. And for the DVD-only version, I'm going to say that's worth about 12 to 13 actually. That's up in value because of that code and because of the slipcover, because the slipcover automatically adds value. So that was my review for, for The Great Race. As I said, it was a complete jumbled mess, but I still kind of enjoy it. Again, it really pains me to say that I only gave it a weak recommend. I wanted to say that, yeah, this movie was really good. Not as good as Legend of the Lost Treasure, but it was still good. But it just... It failed. It kind of failed for me. Anyway, next week we will be taking a look at yet another Christmas release, Tinsel on the Tracks. Or could it be the best Christmas release we've ever had? We'll have to see next week. Until then, thank you all so much for watching, and as always, good night everybody.